I want to share something very special today. It's known as heaven's music. And I have experienced this myself, but I do get a lot of questions in regards to it from people who document it themselves in and outside of hospitals. So one of my dear friends, she sent me a video last night and I have seen this circling around on TikTok, uh, the app platform TikTok. And I always think it's really beautiful. I interview people about their near-death experiences all the time, and I came across something quite spooky. Darren Schinneberger and Deborah Christie Love were two people that I interviewed back to back, and they have a really interesting synchronicity that I want to share with you guys today. So I first interviewed Darren and then Deborah shortly after that. Deborah had said something about the music in heaven and how it's always available to us, and all you have to do is tune into it. And in her ethereal form, she tuned into the music and she tells us what it was like. Almost right after I was finished with Deborah's interview, Darren had sent me a message and said he wanted to show me something. It was a video of one of his friends that had passed away in the hospital room. But the interesting part about this video was there was music. It was angelic sounding music, but nobody who was present in that hospital room heard any music. They even took the video to the front desk and asked some of the doctors and nurses and everybody said the same thing, that they don't play music in the ICU. So it was an, an anomaly to everyone. Take a listen to Darren's video of his friend and then listen to what Deborah has to say about the angelic music from the other side. Hey, I'm sure you always going to be And the guides also told me I could tune into music and there was beautiful, if I listened and tuned into it, there was beautiful heavenly music, like a choir. And it was the most incredible experience. It was not like music here where we just hear it. It was music. It went through you and you experienced the feelings and emotions. And, and it was like this wave of um, all consuming energy uh, that was very intense. And I remember at one point, I'm going, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to stop listening now because you almost get overwhelmed with it. And I said, is it, they said, it's always there. It's, it's there whenever you want to tune into it. You can, it's always there for you. And I want to share my experience with it. So I work with a lot of dying people, the dead, <laughs> angels, people who are losing their babies and their babies don't make it in this life and so much more, so much more. And I have witnessed this multiple times, but the first time it ever happened directly to me was in my truck. <laughs> so I was, um, I lived in a, in a cabin. I never had social media back then. And I, um, I'm leaving my cabin in the Rocky Mountains and driving from Colorado, the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, all the way to New England where I live now. And um, this was many years ago. And I was really going through an emotional state, um, very epiphany, emotional, overwhelmed, like, whoa, <laughs> this is a lot, you know, just, 
it was kind of a very big life transition for me in my calling. So on my way there, it was a very rough trip. I had several of my animals, my dog, I had a chicken, because I had chickens. Um, it was a Sarama chicken, if you know what it is, it's like a very small chicken. Um, I had uh, my daughter and my partner, and they were in a vehicle behind me, in a, a forerunner, and I was in my truck. It's a Ford F-250 Super Duty. I've had it for 10 years, because um, I used to be a rancher as well. Uh, got a pretty rough side to my pioneer and mountain living and um, being pretty isolated from cities and social media until I started sharing all this. Well, anyway, I um, am driving and my Arctic dog, a Siberian Husky, I used to have a Husky team, and uh, you know, to get through the mountains and, and ranches and things like that. But I... Um, I'm just driving, I'm so tired at this point. The trip turned into like 38 hours because there were so many, so many bad storms, so much oil on the roads. It was just, it was a horrible trip. And it was pretty cold and rainy the entire drive. So it was just really difficult to cover a lot of ground like I normally do these days. So I also wanna make it known, I have not had a radio or stereo system or anything in my truck for several, years. I wrote about this in my books. It would flash on and off and it just, it never worked. And I was getting communicating uh, frequencies through my radio. So eventually um, I just unhooked the damn thing <laughs> because I used to also be a mechanic when I was younger, a grease monkey, I would say. And um, so I know how engines and electrical and all that stuff works. I'm also, I've done a lot of electrical engineering in the homes that I built for myself. Uh, all that stuff's in my books and blogs. But anyway, so um, it's, un, it's unhooked, it's not working, and, and it's just, you know, I usually would listen to something on my phone and I'd have a little speaker and, you know, it, it, it wasn't fun. <laughs> but, my huge dog, he was on my right in my passenger seat, and I felt a presence come into my truck, and I'm driving, I'm doing like, you know, 75 at least on this highway, because we had a little bit of a break in the rain. And um, he, and I feel it, I look in my rear view mirror, and I don't see anything, and I'm like, I know that you're there. And I've seen angels literally flying above and on each side of my truck before, like I've literally, and that's how I've also been able to document them um, while I'm on the road, anywhere I pull over and stop. This time I did not stop though, and I wish I would have because of the noise from the wind in the truck and everything. Well, my dog, he, um, Odin, he, Day, he wakes up from a dead sleep, you know, because he was used to traveling. He would just go to sleep in a little ball in my big seat. Well, he wakes up, he turns around, he looks, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, you see him. You know that there's a presence here, don't you? And I knew it was an angelic presence. And so um, Odin stands up on all four on my center console. You remember, I got a Ford F-250, it's very big, and my dog was very big. So, but he was able to stand, he's looking back there, and I'm just like driving, and, and he starts wagging his tail at this rate, and he starts crying. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so I'm like, it's okay. And he sits back down, you know, it calms down and I grab my recorders and I drive a lot. You know, I cover, I can cover between 10,000 miles to 20,000 miles in a month. And so I'm used to, you know, driving and being on the road. And I drove for a living for over 10 years before any, any of this ever happened. It was well over 10 years, <laughs> I get old. Anyway, so, I grab my two recorders and I'm holding the wheel. I'm using my knee a little bit, and um, and I'm and I say, you know, who's here with me? And um, they say something, and you know, heaven does come up at one point. All of a sudden, you hear what sounds like a harp and, and maybe some chimes or something. It's, it's very heavenly, and they said that the music came from heaven. So I'm going to show you that because I documented it when I got to my colonial hotel um, near my historical society in Wichita. And this was the same 
trip when I was going to meet, um, we had Nick Groff, Elizabeth Saint, Stephen Salvis, and Cindy Caza, who had come out to my historical society's mansion, or one of the mansions. It's the Murdoch. And, um, and this was years ago. It was like 2017 or 2018. And, and it was just incredible. And I had actually asked Nick if he had ever had that. He said he had heard that before as well. Um, and he was quite sweet about it. But we didn't talk very much. It was kind of a hectic situation. Oh, his twin sister was there as well. I think I have some old photos. But anyways... <laughs> So this, this does happen. It happens a lot. And, um, you know, there's just so many stories and so much I can share. Once I, I get started, I talk for hours. So I work, you know, cases every single day and I'm helping people every day. And even today, you know, I had multiple people who I was helping. I don't want to put their private information out there, but it's a special thing to be able to do this and to know where we come from and the heavens and angels and so much more. It's ultimately up to you to make the choice to accept it or investigate it and see all of the research, see what people have to share the beautiful things, things in the Bible, things in ancient transcripts, things in history, t literature, text, so much that is real and true. It's not all evil. And remember, where everything has an opposite, there are good witches and bad witches. There are demons and fallen angels. There is good and bad, light and dark in everything. So you cannot tell me that only we only can document and talk to fallen angels well, what about ethereal angels? You know, we talked to bad ghosts. There are good ghosts who are, quote unquote, ready to repent and go into the light. And people like me, we open portals, doorways to heaven. So I'm going to share one more thing in this. It's a group of ghosts that came to me and they said, we prayed for heaven, but we're denied by heaven. And, and it, it does happen. It does happen. They are always ready to repent. That's what the terms that they use. That's what the angels, I've heard them, the angels telling them that, that they are ready to move on and move forward. And um, I'm going to share a little bit more to where when they say they know I'm, they say they know they're dead. There's a lot. There's a lot to doing what I do. And, you know, I hope that this helps others out there, no matter what anyone thinks of me. I know who I am, what I am, where I come from. And angels are kind of outing me lately on it with the whole Anakian bloodline. Blessed